So today I want to look at uh, the different scripts that I have on GitHub and I want to try them on uh, invoke the box that I sent up to uh, try hack me a while ago it's still being reviewed I actually just emailed them today but um I wanted to get on here look some things and see um, if this the scripts are working like I want them to and if not maybe fix them and stuff like that and actually speaking about that I actually did just change up the um, was it enum ad script so it can now run I don't know why it's doing press control a so it can now run um, what is it um, Ruskand so it can go a little bit faster now so let me update that like real quick good night beautiful I love you I said I love you all right let's go ahead and change this up like real quick first then so you guys have the newest versions here so you guys can also run if you use it then you can also run Ruskan there we go let's go ahead and save that commit those changes and um, but yeah so I want to start from the outside and work my way in so first we need to get the IP address which you're about to see a whole bunch of IP addresses because it's just on my local network here um, do I have like a hacking labs or anything like that no let's go ahead and uh, make directory hacking labs or do I have like a home lab or anything like that no okay so let's go ahead and uh, make directory hacking labs CD into there and we'll uh we'll go ahead and start this off and if you guys have any suggestions on how to make the script better please please because i'm not good at scripting so please send it up <clears throat> all right let's go ahead and do a sudo or sudo mmap tag sn and let's see what my IP address is first it should be 192.168 something yep 0.29 so we'll do 192.168 0.0 slash 24 right and let's see what we got up and running here so I'm looking for this guy most likely right here. So 0 0.33 most likely since it's Hatter. Um, yeah, probably looking for him. So we'll go ahead and we'll look at that like real quick. So let's go ahead and uh, look at that 192 with state 0 0.33. Um, actually, let's go ahead and just run the script. Tools enumad.sh. And we'll do that for 192.168.0.33. We'll see if Ruskan still decides to work like right now. Why is this one up here? If you say yes here, just so you know, it starts playing Nine Inch Nails. It opens up a website for Nine Inch Nails songs. Uh, we don't need any of those tools. Um, the domain name, we actually do know, maybe. Well, Hatter, probably Hatter.local, I would think. But we're just going to say enter. We don't know yet. Um, Samurai, I'm looking at the script that I built. I have Invoke up and running. I want to see from outside to inside with the with the bash script that I built and the PowerShell script that I built, how useful they are for this. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in that domain IP address. Um, we don't have a username yet. We don't have a password. Um, we're not gonna use get AD users. I'm thinking about using Kerber Roasting and we don't have a user file. So let's go ahead and enter there. Um, I wanna run Rust scan, so we'll do an R. And let's do a cat on 192 and okay cool it is running rust scan you see a lot of ports are open here so it is running that rust scan like right now so that is working still run through it now with nmap it only looks at certain ports this enum ad.sh uh, script that i made here a uh, bash script um, it only looks at certain ports with rust scan it looks at all ports so at map we'll only look at these ports like right here which is quite a few i mean it's a lot of ports but you know it's mostly just active directory ports you know 139 445 3389 5985 135 53 88 stuff like that you know it's looking for things like that and then i also threw in there you know like uh mysql mssql all that good stuff um and uh smtp um but rust scan will look at all the ports just because it's that much faster so if it takes a little bit longer for the Rust scan, it would take forever for a map to, you know, look at all the ports. So 
still running it. Those are all probably the Amazon ports. Okay, so it's saving everything. So everything's saved now. So that's all the ports that are open, like right there. And now what's going to do is going to go ahead and grep this file that I just made and see like what ports are actually open. So it doesn't, it's not going to run something on 3306 if 3306 isn't in here. That doesn't make any sense to me. So, but what I want to do is I'm thinking Kerber Roasting. So I'm going to do a KI. You see Kerber Roasting is KI. So let's say KI. And let's see if we can do some Kerber Roasting here. And if it's even going to work. It did not. Users file, expect, ooh, I need a user's file, that's why. Okay, so now if we run this again, if we actually run the script again, it shouldn't run through this Rust scan again. It should actually see that this already exists and it should just go ahead and just start doing stuff. Just so you know, so it won't run MMAP and Rust scan twice. Okay, so we don't have a domain name. We do have an IP address. Ooh, I did not want to do Kerberos, and that's why I wanted to do Kerbrew, did I? Username we don't have, password we don't have. We don't have a user file yet. And I could try to get a user. But yeah, as you can see, it already exists, so it's not going to run that MF scan. We actually want to do Kerbrew, don't we? But it might actually ask me for that user file again. Kerbrew location, so if I do a locate Kerbrew. Um, and I actually want Kerbrew Linux, so I can actually do a locate Kerbrew Linux AMD64. There we go, that's like our mind city that. Okay, Kerbrew username file, there we go. So we're not going to use the xnado 10 million usernames.txt, that will take forever. Um, but we can go ahead and we can, um, let's go ahead and cd in the user, user share word list, sec list, usernames, and we're going to ls tech la, and we'll try to find one that's a little bit smaller, maybe short list or something like that. We'll do like short list, maybe something like that, maybe that'll work. And we'll go ahead and we'll throw this whole thing in there, so we'll do a present working directory, we have that. Then actually copy it. So it's going to copy that. Throw that up here. Slash top username shortlist.txt. We'll go ahead and we'll use this uh, one like right here. And let's see if that actually works. Did it try Kerbrew? Or Kerbrew username flags username word list. Except one argument is received two. Okay, so Kerbrew is not working properly like right now. So now let's go ahead and check out Kerbrew right here actually. Okay, so cur location, user enum, cur user. Maybe I don't need the domain in there. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's go ahead and try a cur brute without all that stuff in it. Let's just go ahead and do a. Um, let's go ahead and grab cur brute like real quick. We'll see what exactly it needs. So we're gonna have to do a. Kerbrew user enum, right? User enum, all right? That's what we're going to be using here. Um, dollar sign cur user. Okay, that's the username file. So the username file, which would be Kerbrew user enum. If I hit type type help it right here, do I get more? Uh, you do flags and then username word list. Okay, so I need the flags first. So the flags would be tac tac location domain controller to target if blank will look via DNS. So tac tac domain controller uh, and then 192.168.0.33, right? I believe the IP address was. Yep, 0 0.33. Okay. And then the full domain name to use. Ah, okay. Well, maybe we don't need one of those. Let's see if we don't need one. And then we'll go ahead and we'll throw in that username word list. So we'll go ahead, we'll throw this right back into there and let's see if that actually works. So if that works like right there, then we know what the problem is. Domain must not be empty. Okay, so I do actually need the domain name. Okay, so I think the domain name is header.local just because that's what we received so far. Now, if we don't know, we can actually look at our text file over here. Let's go ahead and look at our text file real quick. 
because it should look at SMB in here. We have maybe haven't gotten to, okay, we haven't gotten to SMB yet. All right, so we're getting there like right now actually to SMB in here, and we should be able to get a domain name at least. So we got header, so it's probably header.local, I would think. I have scan report for that. I would think it would be header.local. Domain name is header zero, it's saying. So let's go ahead and do tech D, and then we'll just go put in that header zero, like right there. So let's go ahead and throw that into there and see if that works. Okay, so we found administrator. But it only tested 17 usernames, so that's not that many. Oh, pretty good capitalism. How are you doing? All right, so let's go ahead and do an Alice Tech LA and try to find a little bit bigger of a word list, I guess. I don't, I don't want to use the 10 million. That's insane. Um, let's go ahead and see the names. And I guess we'll do names.txt maybe. Let's try that one like right there. So we'll say uh, slash names slash names.txt. We'll get rid of all of this over here. Let's go ahead and see if, okay, so that found more people like right there. That at least found Alice like right there. So we don't have to put that 10 million one in there. So let's go ahead and grab this command like right here. So I still need to go upload. So I need, do need attack DC, then attack D. Huh. So we need to get rid of user enum. So we need to get rid of this current user like right here. Because that has to actually go at the very end. Dollar sign cur user. And let's see if I can do that with attack T200 also how I'm doing it. Okay, I can. So that will also work. Okay, cool. So that works like right there. Cool. Um, so let's go ahead and throw, so I have the tag the domain, whatever he's put down for the domain up there, the domain IP, cur user, and then it's getting saved to domain IP.txt. Pretty good. Good. That's good to hear. Good to hear. All right, so let's go ahead. So that is probably correct now. It was just right where this curry user was at that I messed it up at. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that. Yes, I will be putting this straight back into GitHub. Don't worry. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop this again. We'll do this again. Legs out of here. It's not going to do that MAP scan again or Rust scan or anything because it already did it on this box. So. So if you want to run the map or rust scan again, you just want to delete that 192 or whatever it is dot text file, whatever your thing is up there dot text. So if I wanted this to run its map scan again, right? So header zero, we believe it is right. Domain IP was 192.168.0.33. We don't have a username yet. We don't have a password. We're gonna pretend like we never saw any of this crap down here. No, enter. So let's go ahead and Okay, so now we want to use curb root, KB. Actually, I guess we could just use A, huh? We could just do all of them. We'll do A for all of them. Curb root location is right here. Curb root username file is going to be this guy right here. Names.txt file. See, that's, this one's looking at the user's files up top. This one is not. So I'm wondering if I should actually change that up to ask for a user. Ah. No, we're going to leave it like that. We're going to leave it how it is. So now it's going to do a Kerberos username spray. So if I want to actually look at, you know, have it run again. Tools. Um, not tools, excuse me. Uh, desktop. Uh, hacking labs. If I wanted to run that again, I would just do a remove tech RF for this 192.168.0.33.txt. If I go ahead and cat that now, I should see, I would think, yep, there it is. That's exactly what I want to see. All right, cool. So we do actually see it. So we see this Caribbean. So this is most likely already in hash cap format. I'm going to throw it into John the Ripper format though. No, and I have to remember how to do that. Oh, let's try it. Let's go ahead and grab that hash. We're going to go ahead and do a 
nano hash dot text. We'll say John hash dot text for this five dot text four equals four. Let's try that. So it does see that it is that password hash. All right, cool. So it does see that. And it doesn't crack anything. I'm wondering if it can't. I think I need to put it in a different format. This like right here. And I don't exactly remember how to do that. Um, because that's do curb root. I wonder if I want to do the impacket version of that. I think I do actually. So let's go ahead and go down to impacket. Kerber roasting. I think I want to just get MP users. I think I want to do this one like right here. So we would go ahead and we would throw this into there. Let's try this like right here. Get MP users. Uh, users file is. Is it users.txt? I don't know. I haven't actually made a users file yet, have I? Um, well, no, we did not use users.txt. We used the really long one, didn't we? Which I might have to grab that again. Could just scroll up really quickly, huh? So we actually want to use this for our get up users, unless you want to make another user file. And the make to our IP address was 192.168.0.33. So it's not like that at all, though, does it? Oh, probably because it's hgb.local. It's not. It's header zero, is it? Oh, something just flew up like super fast there. Looks like it. Session error. Why am I getting session errors? Client not found in Kerberos database. Okay. It's not seen a bunch of these people, but that one, the other one did not take this long, huh? Let's say 0.33. Let's just go ahead and say user, let's go ahead and put Alice into a user file and see if that works. Let's go ahead and do a nano users.txt. We'll put Alice in there because that was the person's name. And we'll go ahead and say users.txt. Okay, so it does actually get it. Okay, cool. This one, I believe, can be used for John the Ripper. So let me go ahead and move tech RF hash dot text, or it's the other way around. I remember. We'll go ahead. We'll do a uh, nano hash dot text, and we'll go ahead and throw that in there. We'll do a John hash dot text. For there we go. All right. So there's that, like right there. Uh, so I wonder if I should actually do both of those. Uh, no, we're not going to download Print Nightmare. No, we're not going to test for zero logon. I mean, we could. Could test for it. Sure, why not? Uh, let's go ahead and locate zero logon. SMB share name. We can cat that 192.168.0.33.txt to see the SMB share name, which I'm pretty sure is just had or zero. Pretty sure it says, I think, the domain name, isn't it? Probably just grep for it also. Ooh, you can ask for it. Nope, okay. So we'd have to actually read through this guy real quick. For SMB share name, should just be, I feel like it says, I think the domain name is Hatter Zero. So we could type in Hatter Zero. We're going to try that. And actually didn't like that at all. Invalid computer name. It probably because it's probably hatter not local. That's most likely that's would be share name. I can't grep for anything in here. I wonder how to change that out. Probably can actually grep for stuff. Or more of just because it's still writing to it, I can't grep for anything.
it's most likely hatter dot local or hatter zero dot local you always do an M map tag P four four five tag SC tag SV one nine two one six eight zero thirty three tag PN test for no crap Mac to Zek PS Zek log on no uh, try to escalate user with NTL and relay no RDP is open uh, we do know a user and we do know password we always say no 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 we're not gonna open up a new tap responder okay so let's go ahead and let's see what we can do with this password one like right here if I remember correctly I think it's a I don't really remember my own box but I believe it's SMB client tag L uh, 192.168.0.33 tag U is going to be Alice tag capital U excuse me it's going to be Alice and her password was <clears throat> password 1 alright okay so she can't see stuff and she sees the share I that pub things like that right so let's go ahead and uh can we get into share and see what we got there access denied Yep, it is hatter local. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't remember. I don't. I really don't remember my own box. It's kind of funny. Okay, so she can't look at share. Can she look at that? Can she look at iDat pub? Can she look there. So I have another idea. If iDat pub is open. She can, but there's nothing in it. Okay. So she's not allowed to look at share, huh? What about Sithwell? She look at that. She should not be able to RDP in it. I do remember that. Okay, have it out local. See your scripts. Policies. Okay. So she should be able to RDP in if I do a remina. And then if I do that for her for 192.168.0.0.33. Yes. Username Alice. Password. Password. I she should not be able to oh 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 nope, she's not able to RDP into it. Cyber remotely decided I know what to do next. All right, so now we just ran that script once. Let's go ahead and run it again because I have an idea. Let's go ahead and remove tech RF 192.ldap. Let's go ahead and remove this like right here. Okay, so it's asking us do we want to play some nine-inch nails? Not right now. None. We don't need LDAP domain now, but we do have a domain name now. Hatter.local, right? Fully qualified domain name is hatter.local. Okay. We do have a domain IP, 192.168.0.33. We do have a username, Alice. We do have a password, p s n s s w g o r d one Let me just make sure that is correct. p s n s s yep, w g o r d one uh, We don't need to do a get ad user.py. We don't need a user file. What's up, Forgiven? How you doing? How long are you in this business? Um, I've been doing this for fun for a few years now. Let's go, DZ64. How you doing? All right. So you provided a password or username. Would you like to try to crap map possess stuff? No, because it's not even open. Well, it is open, but not 985 is not open. But did you provide a username password? Would you like to try LDAP domain dump? Yes. So, saying that that file doesn't exist. Why is it saying that file doesn't exist? 
because I assure you it does. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's go ahead and see if that file exists. Cat when I two dot text it does exist. You lie like a rug, but it did CD in the one I two LDAP. Oh wait wait. That file does exist. Let's go ahead and remove tech RF. LDAP one. Let's do that 33 text. Let's go ahead and remove both those. I think my son just woke up. So let's go ahead and stop this again. You can see that file 192.168.033 does not exist. But it does. So go ahead and run this again with Ruskan. Oh, um, no, not right now. Not for the next couple of years. Yep, my son just woke up. Give me one second. Let me go make sure. No. Hey, give me one second. I'll be right back.
All right. Sorry about that. He uh, was in the bathroom crying. Mom was already in there, obviously, because moms are the greatest people in the world. But um, he had been having this like little cough and just, I guess, his throat was just sore and it hurts. So, all right. So we'll do had it out local one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot thirty three, right? Uh, username we said is Alice. Password is psinssw zero d one. No user file. Uh, we'll do a rust scan on it. Okay, so it's running that rust scan again on all those ports, right? So you go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and cat that. So at least it knows they exist again. So that might take a minute again, but like I said, this is all for testing. Um, you know, while this is actually running, let me go ahead and gra actually grab um, the other stuff that I need here. So, that, 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 that. actually, I should have, because I just changed something I did not. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a little um, edit it. We'll head back over to Cali here. And we'll grab it again because I did just change something. We'll save that. And we'll go ahead and we'll throw that over into here now. Okay, maybe I won't save it. Or maybe I won't copy it. Right click copy. Head back over to here again. Or maybe it'll just freeze and die. Either one, you know, whatever. One Chrome tab open, 12 Chrome tabs open. You never know what's going to happen. All right, let's go ahead and try that again. Um, GitHub, invoke everything. Yeah, we restore it. That'd be sweet. All right, cool. Thanks. There we go. We'll go ahead and we'll save that again. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we are. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm also going to need, I believe, invoke everything.ps1, I believe. So let's go ahead and we'll just grab this and we'll throw it over in spawn text and just do it like that. So let's go ahead and grab that guy right there. And we'll throw him over to here. We'll do a quick um, CD in the tools. Let's go like this. No, okay, cool. So do a sublime text for invoke everything.ps1. Save that in there. All right, cool. And let's go ahead and do a, since you provide a username and password, let's try crap not to up. No, thank you. Um, yes, all that domain dump. Yes, we do want to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and see if there's anything useful in there now. Okay, so it says username must include a domain. Use domain slash username. So I obviously messed that up somewhere in the script. Let's go ahead and look at that like real quick while I'm doing this. So we'll go ahead and we'll look at LDAP domain dump. Okay, do you need any following tools? No. Okay, LDAP domain dump. So we want to do a dollar sign domain slash, I said, right? Which way is that slash? Slash, wrong way, slash user, like that, right? We actually want this to be like that. Okay, let's go ahead and do the pass like this also, and then domain IP. So we'll go ahead and we'll try to run that again. Let's save that. I know, run the same thing repeatedly. I got it. <clears throat> so that they're good testing. <laughs> Okay. Whenever I'm testing it, I want to get rid of the uh, Nine Inch Nails one. <laughs> uh, Hatter dot local domain IP one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot thirty three Alice PS nine one and that's not it. God damn it, that wasn't a zero. Sorry, it's gonna make for a sweet video. <laughs>
All right. Let's see if that works. You cannot bind with specified credentials. Okay, let's see if that's true. CD into there. Okay, let's go ahead and do an LDAP domain dump. Right, and we want to do attack you for the username, right? And that's going to be maybe it's hatter zero, maybe that's probably why. Alice password one for 192.168.033. Can I do that? Domain. Yep, so it is hatter.local. Let's include domain, use domain slash username. I feel like I am. Maybe we have to have it like this. Okay, so that worked just fine, it looks like. Yeah, it did. That worked just fine. Okay, so why did that not work over here? Because that would be domain, and then the user, right? Attack P. Would be the password, right? That mess up the password, and then domain IP. Domain user pass domain IP, which is exactly what I have over here. Domain user password IP. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, let's try this one more time. So we're going to have no, none, have it out local. That's literally what I just used, right? Yep, have it out local. It's domain name, domain IP, 168.0.33. Username is Alice. Password is PSNSSWRD1. No. Enter. Hey, what's up? No, no, nothing. How you doing? I am back. Uh, a few days ago, got back. Yes. Could not bind with specified credentials, invalid credentials. I wonder what's trying to bind with. I wonder how it's trying to bind it. And I'm wondering if it's straight up just saying domain user. You know what I'm saying? Or if it's just straight up just saying that. I wonder if I can do it like that, like right there. Let's go ahead and try this, like right here. So if we do a. If we get rid of this, get rid of that. We do a slash slash. Is that going to mess it up? No, it does not. Okay, so we move back RF. Main star. Let's go ahead and try it like that then. Pass user domain IP. We come up here, right? And we look at everything. We have pass, user, domain, domain IP. So that's everything, like right there, for LDAP domain dump. Domain, user, pass, domain IP. Okay, that's really, really, really strange. I'm wondering if it's actually passing it straight up as... I wonder if the script's not going to be able to do an LDAP domain dump. Got it, let's go. Alright, so now if we go into that LDAP domain dump, we see the into there, we get all this information, right? So let's go ahead and do a Firefox 
domain users.html. And as usual, if there is a description, we can see it. And we see that print service has a description on it for this link right here. So let's go ahead and grab that. And let's see if we can run it in with that. And actually, before I do any of that, let's go ahead and actually copy this whole thing. And we'll put it over into GitHub again. We'll edit this file again. We'll delete all this and we'll go ahead and update that guy right there. I told you guys are going to be getting the most up to date one. <laughs> Even though if you talk to DZ, it's not good. <laughs> He's also like a master programmer. Whoa. Whoopsie daisy. There we go. Okay, commit changes. All right, cool. So we got that. So let's go ahead and um, try to log in with print service. I forgot what print service password was, so I'm kind of glad that we did that. So let's go ahead and log in with print service. So we'll do a um, Remina cancel, and it was 192.168.0.33 was print underscore service. And the password was five down, six down, shift five down, shift six down. And I messed that up. I believe that was password. Yep, okay, cool. So now we're getting in with print service. Now I want to pass off the next script, which is invoke everything. So let's go ahead and open up PowerShell. And let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can run PowerShell as administrator first off. No, right click does not work. Yeah, about that. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and do an invoke everything now. So let's make CD into tools. So we're done with that now. We can CD into tools, and we'll do a Python three web server, right? And let's go ahead and do a wget HTTP. I don't know what my password is, um, or what my IP address is. Excuse me. <clears throat> Zero dot twenty nine. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw that in there slash invoke everything dot ps1 our file is going to be invoke everything i don't know why am i doing w get first off that's kind of stupid to me iex iwr http I don't know why the heck I'm doing a WG in the first place there. Okay, cool. So we got that now, right? Now we should be able to do an invoke everything. Okay, so we have attacker IP. So we can actually do attack. And then, okay, cool. Attacker IP, we can say is 192.168.0.29. Let's see what else. We have verbal debug. Okay, so just regular stuff after that. So the only thing we need is the attacker IP. So the following tools are needed power up power view power view dev power up sql invoke mb cats so all i should have all of that do you have the following tools ready yes okay so very first thing is doing is trying to save up real-time monitoring we obviously can't do that it's running arp and ip config running who am i and all this stuff and everything right it's putting i should be putting this all into a file also all this information should all be going into invoke.txt so we can actually most likely see that if we open up our powershell we do a dir all right, it's got an invoke.txt, okay? Now, if we open up the SMB share over here, it'll actually copy that back to us. So if we actually do a SMB server.py, share um, period SMB2 support, this will actually try to send it back to us. Um, it may not, I may have been too late on it. We'll try to run it again. We'll run that save that thing again and see what we get. Yes. Running power up with invoke all checks. So we, a lot of these errors that we're seeing, all this red and stuff like that, is just because we literally can't do that. Security policies block unauthenticated yes assets. Okay. We actually can't even send it back to ourselves because it's blocking authenticated guest access. So we actually can't even send it back to ourselves because it's blocking it. We do get this like right here though. It does try to do something to us. Uh, let's do an LN attack LA, see if we got anything at all. We did not. Okay. So we know that we have nothing in there that we can't see in there we could always do a type invoke.txt and this is all the information that I dropped okay for us 
and we see a hijack one uh, DLL was, this is for the power up when we ran all those checks right um, speedy as always now this one's going pretty slow um, what we do see right here is run a bypass UAC attack to elevate privileges to admin now I think I think I don't remember if I put it in there or not because I was on the ship when I did all this so I only had so much stuff with me and I could only look up so much stuff and getting on Google takes like 10 minutes on a ship so if you're about a ship you know exactly what I'm talking about let's go back to invoke everything and we will go to uh, invoke privesk so I believe I think I have it in here where we can do a um, bypass UAC or name MSI bypass okay so no uh, UAC okay so no it's not in here like right here now let me check my Cali like real quick because I do believe I do have something in here for bypass UAC and we can go ahead and put it in there make that file a little bit better so see the tools as you can see it did reach back to me it got tried to get a whole bunch of stuff from it right so Now, one thing to remember to my Twitch description, I should, Drew Rad. I really should. It is just github.com slash overgrown care one, but I will do that. I will. That's a, not a bad idea. See? I'm not that smart. <laughs> All right, so I believe I do have a bypass, OS Tech LA bypass. Because where I had bypass UAC in here. I've done my own box before, so I know I have something in here that can bypass UAC. There it is. Okay, cool. So it's that's like LA bypass. What? Okay. There we go. All right. So we want to get that now over to there, right? That bypass UAC.ps1. Now let's go ahead and get onto my script here for um, invoke privesk. Let's go ahead and download that like real quick. So we'll go ahead and we'll just do this much easier. Let's go ahead and go up to raw. And we're just gonna say w get. Hey, thank you very much for the follow. Who uses sharp on a PS1 for anything? I oh I love it. <laughs> That's what you don't like about the script, huh? As, uh, I'm still trying to see. Thank you for the follow, Drew Rad. Thank you very much. All right. So let's go ahead and grab that bypass UAC. Let's go ahead and grab the uh, wget. All right, invoke privest.ps1. So this is another one I wrote on ship, which obviously as I work through boxes, I start to use this stuff like that. Um, I'll actually, you know, continue to update it and fix it, things like that. So if you guys do see problems with it, please, please let me know. Um, this will not work in both privest on things like um, if you have like, if you're evil win RM, and it's not going to work to ask questions throughout it and even when rm stuff like that does not like that <clears throat> all right so we have this bypass uac i believe i might actually have in my notes this bypass uac i might have it maybe not if not i do re kind of remember how to use it so we're gonna have to send it over there never gonna have to put it in my notes it could be kind of funny but let's go ahead and uh, let's just, let's do a spline factory bypass. Let's see, PS1. Probably got to send it over there because there are certain parameters that you do have to do. So let's go ahead and do that, like real quick. Let's go ahead and get it over to here first. So we'll do a IEX, IWR, and we'll see which one works. 192.168.033 slash bypass UAC.ps1. Did I shut it off? No. Bypass UAC on PS1. It is in tools, right? Let's go ahead and start to set it back up. Oh, probably because I wrote it in the wrong IP address, huh? Probably because I'm dot twenty nine, huh? So we'll say dot twenty nine. Bypass UAC. Okay. So let's go ahead and run that bypass 
UAC, TAC, I believe it's actually TAC method, and then we actually want to look at the methods over here, method, and I believe I want this one like right here. Now, this one does X4, Win7 Plus, on patch test systems. Okay. Yes. That was pretty good. Um, move and replace. Yes. It looks like we just bypassed it, and it looks like we are now. And, okay, we're still print service, but did I actually... CD and C, CD and C users administrator desktop. Okay, so we have bypassed it. No, we have not. Okay, I figured that we did. Tack method, tack custom DLL variables, default interaction. <clears throat> Could have swore that was the one. Same shell is not advised. PowerShell. I figured out the problem. All right, let's try unpatch test it up to that. Let's try this guy right here then. I was positive that one was the one, but maybe not. Maybe it's one of these other ones. Let's go ahead and get a new shell open, and we'll do a <coughs> uh, bypass UAC.ps1, and let's go ahead and do a bypass UAC attack method. Let's try this one right here. Okay, so that one does not work right, right there. It doesn't like that one. Okay, we'll exit out of there. Start up another PowerShell. And we'll try again with a different bypass UAC. So we can definitely run it. We can definitely do it in like, you know, um, was it Metasploit or some of that, but let's continue to try to run this other guy here. Uh, what do I want? Oh, I want to look here. Sublime text. I'm pretty sure of that one. Let me try this one one more time. It's not supported. Now it's not supported. It was 10 minutes ago, but now it's not. Okay. This one's saying it's an administrator shell. <gasps> You know why? We we do have an administrator shell. We can run Mimicast now. So that was it. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this like right here. So we'll go ahead and what we'll do is we are going to have the PowerShell script download. We'll say, so invoke Privesk. And we will say, um, let's see, this would be a local Privesk, right? So let's go ahead and if confirmation equals local Privesk, do all this. Also, domain privest say this, and then persistence. So local privest, we're going to say that we can also run bypass UAC. Okay. Now, we can kind of scroll down to the bottom, just kind of add something else into here. And we're just going to add another function to here, right? So we're going to say function bypass UAC. All right, so... You click on if you do that one we'll do that like right there so no you want to why because i can i remember now because i made it so only the actual administrator can look at it not just anyone that you know has an administrator shell so you have to do mimi cats because i wanted to have people do mimi cats on here all right so there's that so function bypass uac so let's go ahead and actually look up where i actually got this even from first so we can uh, download it or do like an ixiwr kind of thing to it um so we'll open up Firefox, and we'll do bypass UAC PS1. It's fun to do in my own box. <laughs> way more difficult. My own box is way more difficult than I thought it would be. But that's might be because I'm an idiot. Uh, so we'll do raw. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab that. 
what we're going to say is we're just going to say IEX IWR and we're going to try to bring that to us, right? So we'll say, uh, go ahead and do an IEX or actually let's go ahead and do a, an echo first, right? So right host, foreground, boom, boom, right host, foreground color, we'll say yellow, background color, will be black, or if you say, um, putting bypass UAC dot PS1 into memory, and we'll go ahead and do the IEX IWR, that like right there, and then we'll go ahead and we'll say um, the exact command actually I just typed in because I think that most systems are going to be running this like right here. I feel like most systems will, would have that one like right there, unless we're attacking Windows, you know, NT. They'll say that, okay? Um, yeah, that looks pretty good like right there. Uh, so now what we can try to do is actually try to just run that. Let's see if that actually works like right there. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a PowerShell. And we'll say IEX IWR HTTP 192.168.0.29, right? Slash um, invoke privesk dot ps1. Let's see if this works or not. All right, attacker IP 192.168.0.29. Would you like to run an MSI bypass? Uh, sure, why not? Okay, and we'll do a local, we're going to say local privesk. Probably make that a little bit easier and then it, the script can actually run anything you want so if you already know like domain privet stuff and you already ran a script before it'll run whatever you want this just kind of shows you exactly what you can do with it right that's all it's doing like right there <clears throat> it also runs certain things like versus local versus uh domain versus persistence it's gonna run certain things like who am i and crap like that um with powershell it does get stuck also as DZ has pointed out, it's PowerShell. Okay, so it will get stuck, so you might have to enter a couple times, things like that. All right, so that just kind of gives you a little overview of where you're at, like right now, right? Um, we want to do a bypass UAC. I did not put a comma in there. Damn. Okay, let's fix that. So we're going to say, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, um, bypass UAC all right putting bypass on PS1 okay sorry this OS version is not supported all right so we got last time and that was because we already did it once huh so let's go ahead and exit out of here we might have to restart the box so let's go ahead and restart this box like real quick I'll exit out of here okay because we did the bypass for UAC so I probably messed it up let's go ahead and open them back up again and we'll go ahead and we'll hop back in and we'll run that same exact thing again and we should be good we'll just run that guy again straight up that guy so we'll start off where we left off at and like i said i forgot to put a damn comma in there can't be good putting scripts online without a comma people are going to type in bypass uac always install elevated because you know nobody actually knows how to run the script they just copy and paste <laughs> DZ, do you have any idea how long this took me to do since like getting on Google literally takes like 10 minutes on a ship do you know how long it took me to do this like if I had to look something up I would try random crap before I look something up just because of how long it took to like do things like that. oh Oh, yeah. it, it, so I do everything at nighttime. I'll do it all at nighttime. So then it wasn't many people online. So it wasn't as bad. But like I would usually get a lot of it, like, you know, five, six hundred lines of it done at like nighttime. And I had the Red Team Field Manual out there with me also. So that kind of helped out like a little bit too, you know, flip through that stuff. But that's version one. I don't have version two yet. And, um, but yeah, it took forever. And then the worst part is like, I can't really, a lot of this is just going off my notes also. So I was like, all right, you know, like I know my notes are pretty close to correct. But um, another thing was like, now I want to like test like every time I get into a box like, that I could test it with, I just kind of want to test like real quick and be like, okay, what else can we put in here? Or what else can we fix? And things like crap. 
crap like that. I mean, damn, it took it, it took a while. Okay, so we have print service, and then we have um. But yeah, DZ let me know that I sucked though, so no worries. <laughs> He's like, hey, hey, it may have taken it may have taken hours slash days, but uh, doesn't mean it's any good. <laughs> Took me an hour to take a shit also. It doesn't mean that's a good thing. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do that, like right there. We'll go ahead and grab that uh should I should be able to press up. Yep. Invo privex. Oh, attacker IP 192.168.0.29. Uh yeah, we're running an MSI bypass, sure, why not? We'll do local privesc. Okay, cool. <laughs> And we got bypass UAC. Hey, I helped fix a school out there. I built a door. Well, I think I built a door school. I don't know. Some guy was hitting it with a sledgehammer, but he was like, eh, eh. Like, it, it looked like he'd been working on that wall for a, a while. So me and my buddy, we walk in there and we're like, yo, bro, like, you want us to hit that thing with the sledgehammer? He's like, yes, sir. So we take the sledgehammer and I take one swing at it. There's guys on the outside of it, like, catching, like, the, um, the crap that's falling off. I took one swing at it and those guys got the hell out of the way. They're like, nope. Because I just started beating this wall to hell and i was like you guys need this part take it out like yep. wow as soon as i hit it that thing just started like exploding i'm like there you go brother like we got you my buddy took it and went straight through the wall <laughs> just punched a hole in it he was just about done at that point he gave it back to me and i just freaking just beat it and finally fell apart so that was pretty awesome all right so let's go ahead and do a bypass uac and let's see okay so retreating the conquest Hmm. This OS is not supported. And then we get a shell and see Windows. <laughs> I feel like it was supported. <laughs> uh, who am I slash priv? Still the same privileges. Still hatter zero print service. We did open up another shell. But it's saying that it's not supported. But it literally just did this. On this machine. And it's the same one that I actually just used, right? It was the same exact one, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but it opened up another. Let's go ahead and try to put. Let's go ahead and do this. We'll see if, if we have. Go ahead and do this. Like right here. We'll open the castle real quick. See if we get anything. And then we'll do a. No. Okay, so it is not taking it. Is it because... It's probably because I already used it. So now... Are we going to have like problems using this again? Let's go ahead and actually download bypass uac.ps1 again. And do it with the attack method. It's saying that I can't do that. Let's try it with the other method. The other method did not work though either. Even though it did just work a minute ago. Oh man, that's shitty. Let's see here. 17 plus. Let's try this guy right here. This is like he's special. He's got UAC zero day. Let's see what this is. Nope, this OS is not supported. What OS do you think this thing is? It's a Windows 10 OS. Oh no, it's a server OS, but. That's a server, but I should still take that to be four. So I'm wondering since I already did the UAC bypass, if now we're kind of screwed. I wonder if I actually need to like re download this box, you know what I'm saying? That would be shitty. Okay, so that's straight from that one, like right there. So I'm wondering if I actually need to re-upload the box, really. Huh. Have we got any ideas? We already did it once. We already opened up the other PowerShell. There's no right-clicking. There's no run as the other thing. 
We can't do a run as. We can't do right click. I mean, we could always. No, we can't use mass exploit. Yeah. <laughs> always snapshot for trying. <laughs> um. Let's see here. I think. I mean, I think I, I have it somewhere. It's obviously on my machine somewhere. Uh. There's invoke two. This is invoke two, like right here, right? Server twenty twenty two. See. No biggie. No. Server 2019 is invoke. Oh, we're on invoke on, we not invoke two. Uh, let's go ahead and grab server 2019. Should be some here somewhere. I don't know, VMs, videos, media, Cali VM files. I don't know. I don't know what the hell this thing's at. Try Acme. Try Acme. Holy Jesus. Now you guys see what's on my computer. D drive. VMs, virtual box VMs. <laughs> Am I getting there? Yeah, I might have to redownload everything, so that might. I'm wondering if that script's going to work now. Okay, at least I know where to download that. Huh? <laughs> Told you we'd find it again. Fucking open up in fucking virtual box. What the hell? Why don't you just open up a virtual box? Is this the actual I'm wondering if this is actually this box like right here or actually the server itself? File new Two thousand nineteen. Boom. See, I'm not that stupid. You know, they call. Oh, maybe I had that dumb. Details looking at the attached media failed. A possible reason is that where the media attached are running VM. That does make sense since it's right here, you know. That's the best error virtual box has ever given me. You just like failed because stuff and things happen. You're like, oh, okay. The good news is in try hacking, you can reset the box. <laughs> so if you do that literally exactly I just did, you can reset it. I can't just reset it. Should delete all files then. Just not be able to do anything else. That would have been a good time. DZ, have you been able to make the um, one thing um, VMware yet? Oh, you shouldn't be watching this. Have you done invoke yet? You shouldn't even be watching this. You're not allowed to use any of my scripts. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and map back into this thing. Uh, we need to get the IP address first. So map tag SN. Since we got a new machine here, so we need to get the IP address first here. Um, let's see here. We're looking for. See and get IP address. I don't remember the administrator's password. <laughs> and it's not showing anything on here. Okay, I think I can remember. We, we can remember this. Sticky keys, right? Sticky keys attack, right? Let's try this. Oh crap! Okay, I got another idea. Wait, what? What is it even on? Devices, network, network settings. Well, that's probably why. Okay, there we go. All right, now let's try to do that again. Yes. Yes, DZ, you are. That's, what, that's perfectly acceptable. In my eyes. Probably have to say. 
Oh, thank God. Okay, I do remember the administrator password. Good thing I make every single thing the exact same thing, huh? <laughs> there it is. There's the UAC bypass. Where is this invoke bypass UAC? It's in um the invoke bypass UAC. Um, the actual one. That is actually I just put it in the thing so I can show you. It's on GitHub. If you actually just look up invoke bypass, it's actually there. Um, but right here, fuzzy security PowerShell suite. Um, the invoke privesk. Oh, good, good. DC, how you doing? The invoke privesk thing that I pointed it into is on GitHub under overgrown carrot one. All right, so let's. Dude, you can't use my scripts now. <laughs> you have to, you have to use, you have to get all your own scripts now and do it. All right, let's. Um, oh wait, I want to get the IP address real quick, right? Zero dot thirty four. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and hop into zero dot thirty four then. Cancel one nine two one state zero dot thirty four. No, now it's not going to be able to connect to it, huh? 034. You know what else I noticed? It's not actually saying invoke, is it? I wonder if I change the name. I mean, that shouldn't matter. I also can't ping myself. My own machine over there. Uh, I wonder if it's because the voice is going to unplug the cable or plug it back in. Actually, bridge adapter. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Still took 0 34. What if we want actually just want to give it 0 23 IP address? This is what we were attacking for, right? Or was it 33? I think it was actually 33, wasn't it? Oh, awesome. Good, good, good. Oh, man, that's freaking awesome, dude. That is awesome. Good job, DC. That's awesome. Let's see if I can unmap it out. So 0 0.34 did not show it up. Does not like that IP address like right there now, does it? Let's go ahead and restart the machine. And we'll start back up again. Because it does not like 0 0.34. Oh yeah, yep, still at it. Just got back not too long ago. I'm gonna have to go to bed soon. It's almost like midnight here, but I really want to test my last part of the script that we I just wrote onto this thing. <clears throat> DZ also just to give you a heads up um, on invoke privesk that bypass UAC one is not on there yet. I haven't updated that part yet. Until I verify that works, I don't want to update it. Should pull the same IP address as 0 0.34. Still not seeing anything. 23 came back though. Was 23 up there earlier? No, it was not. What is 23? Twenty-three is gone again. Thirty-four is still not up there. What the hell was I attacking before anyways? Dot thirty three. Okay, let's go ahead and just change that IP address to dot thirty three. Let's see if that if I did something weird. Or if whenever we cloned it we did something weird. Because to me it seems like one and done in the box. Yeah, I mean it should be, yes. Hundred percent should be. And I 
feel like it's actually, you know what I think is actually happening like right now? Because that administrator shell keeps opening right. Um, I feel like it's actually running the UAC bypass though on it because it's probably pulling from the actual machine that actually has it. So that's probably why I can't get an IP address also. I can't change adapter settings. How do I, I'm, I'm an administrator. What else do you want me to do? What, what else could you possibly want from me? Okay, there we go. Yeah, I can't. I can't change the adapter settings on this machine at all. And it just froze for some reason. I guess 32 or 64 gigs, whatever the hell I have of RAM, is it enough? Stable, net adapter, yeah, net adapter. Let's keep doing that. Just want to get the net adapter. Show net adapter, is that what it is? No, it should just be get net adapter, it should show me stuff. But for some reason, this thing is jacked up now. That, by, that bypass UAC really messed it up. But that should have done it, like right there. I'm just gonna go with we did it. <laughs> that bypass UAC really messed it up. Um, I can't give it a static IP address from out here, can I? No. Settings, you should, I mean, I shouldn't be able to. Network, advanced, boom, boom. Okay, bridge adapter, that's all good. Um, let's actually do like an internal network, or uh, not network, internal. Let's say that. Just say okay. Start back up again. See if it gets a different IP. Oh no, no, it's most likely not stealthy at all. No. Now once you do it, um, everyone knows that something's wrong. <laughs> like you better move real quick after that. However, whenever I did it before, like whenever I was like doing this box like the beginning, I did not have nearly this many problems. But I also didn't run it 17 times <laughs> with different ones, you know, going at it also. Uh, let's go ahead and try to do devices, network, network settings. And we'll put this also on that network, uh, internal. And then we'll do an ipfig, make sure it pulls a new IP address. We'll have to unplug the cable, plug it back in, most likely do. Unplug. Plug back in. It's still the same IP address. There we go. 10 0 0. So let's go into an MF tech SN 10.0.0.0 slash 24. 748, like right there. Let's see what this does. So we have a 47. So we're going to do an MF tech attack. Uh, 10 0 0 47. Okay, that looks like Windows to me cool beans jelly machine so let's try to remnant into that guy yep okay cool and we had print service right print service and it was PX and nope it was five down there we go five down six down <laughs> all right DZs are just gonna get in the box with print services. Be like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do a Windows PowerShell now, and let's try to. Yes, because it's still taking the commands from before. So it definitely is still because it's just pulling from the same exact machine, huh? So we'll try it one more time. Um, I don't see it working. But at least ten zero zero forty eight ten zero zero forty eight, I believe I was. Yes. Okay, local curve uh, so I should probably just make that D L and P, huh? Instead of going through all that crap. Instead of actually typing in local curve S.
Oh, damn, I was hoping I could just go through it. Didn't know I had actually let that run. I say this OS version is not supported again. But if we head over to the administrator tab, there is a shell that's open, isn't there? So if we literally run that into the administrator, so if we sign out and then sign in as administrator, it'll have a PowerShell window open. So that means I think it's just because it's pulling from the same machine again and just doing the same exact thing again. That's most likely the problem like right there. So the concept behind that is once you get it, which should work just fine, as long as you don't do it 47 different times like I decided to, um, is once you're in there to do maybe cats. But I think the newest part of the script should work just fine. So we should go ahead and throw that up there. Sublime text, invoke privas, not PS1, and we'll go ahead and we'll actually just count for this whole thing. We'll throw this whole thing up there. So far, it looks like that one actually is supposed to be doing what it's doing. We'll, we'll delete all this crap. And we'll save that. Also, just so everyone knows, like these are like some of like the first invoke everything was like the first PowerShell script like I really have ever actually sat down and written so you can do it it's not anything freaking crazy you can definitely do it the administrator tabs take it forever to open up Let's see if we can just run it into it this guy's taking forever I have to go to bed soon I got a few more minutes so enumad.sh worked, and both privs technically worked. The bypass UAC worked. I just am an asshole and exited out of the command prompt window. So, and then I broke my own box. So all in all, actually not a bad day. Sounds like a normal working day to me. Like, I broke, broke my own box. I think it's beyond broke. This thing's taking damn forever now. Yeah, I broke my box. That's okay. Won't be the first time. How are 16 people still watching this? <laughs> See, this number is different. Every number is always different. Oh, now 17. 18. I don't know why you guys are watching this. I wouldn't. They're just breaking VMs. Could always actually go on to here go to. Uh, I don't want to go to Google Drive while on stream. If you guys wonder how I did that, control delete, right control delete, it says I think it's control delete within the VM. So technically we would have a administrator shell open, right? That's what we saw over there. So what we would do from here actually is IEX IWR HTTP download 10.0.0.48 slash invoke mimicats.ps1, right? Boom. Okay. Technically we do that, we do an invoke mimicats. Okay, then you could put in the other stuff for some reason, invoke maybe cats. Okay, cool. It did work. Um, so, let's see here. There's the administrator like right there, right? We grab that hash guy. Now, 
Evil WinRM, like I said, does not is not on this box, or WinRM is not on this box. We can't just WinRM into it. So from here, we would have to try to figure out how to pass the hash, which I believe I did WMI or pass the hash uh, W Win execute for the administrator. Now this does need an NTLM hash, and the only thing we have is an NT for the LM portion. We're just gonna put in all zeros. If you don't know how to do that, just go ahead and go to Sublime Text, right? Sublime, and then we'll say hash hash.txt whatever okay we'll put in not that we'll exit off here that's not what i wanted close without saving we want this hash like right up here right that administrator's hash like right there wherever it went so we're going to take his hash that guy control c him hopefully you know what it's actually not going to do anything for me because ready watch Yep, that's not going to do anything for me because um, I don't have it so I can copy and paste because it's a brand new box, isn't it? But all you do is you just put this one on top, put this one on bottom. So, well, I'll show you actually with this guy right here. So, we would have had this hash copied, right? We'll do a sublime text. Oh, God, it's still trying to copy that whole thing in there. We would do a sublime text, hash.txt. We'll put that guy on top. And then we would just do zero, 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 zero. And just do zeros. All the way until you hit all of them right and let's go ahead and copy that and throw it up there that's the easiest way to do it like right there instead of trying to count everything out and then we want to do that for 10 0, 0, 47 right so we're going to pass the hash with 10 0, 0, 47 and now we're in the system now we can finally look It's not a very good shell, if you can't tell. Jesus. And I'm not very good at typing. And we can finally type out that root.txt. Yep. And I'm going to close like real quick so then you guys just don't get to just type it into try me. But that's how we finally get into it. Um, bypass UAC didn't work. I'm just an asshole. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything. That's so... This script over here, we fixed this like a little bit. That ended up working a lot better for us. We updated that guy, the enumad.sh, right? Which is really what I wanted to do. We updated invoke privesc. I believe we updated, right? We just updated that one like right there. Yep, function bypass UAC. So we updated that guy like right there. Um, so those are two of the scripts that I liked a lot. Um, invoke everything did work also. Are the boxes like, no, they're still not live. I actually just emailed try hack me and i was like hey like i set this box up a while ago um you guys emailed me when i was on the ship when i was on a ship and um i couldn't really receive it but um they actually said like uh to change what the format was for the uh walkthrough for the official walkthrough for them so i changed that and then just never heard anything back again so i just emailed them today and said like hey like i changed it to the format you guys wanted and you know invoke 2 was also changed the same exact thing and um so I'm trying to get that, you know, going. So what's up, Ascertainment? How you doing? But yeah, so I'm trying to get, you know, I mean, either approve or deny. I don't care. Even if it gets freaking rejected, just make a decision. Yeah. <laughs> so invoke everything works. Invoke privest works. And invoke or an enum ad.sh work. These ones like right here are if they're running. So if they have DNS operator, if they have, um, backup operator what format they were. uh just a pdf i ended up setting it up in a cherry tree i didn't even realize it it was just they just wanted a pdf that's all it wasn't anything crazy but when you're on a ship that is crazy because it's not like i can just you know oh let me go ahead and open up cherry tree oh wait i can't you know things like that so i had to wait till like we ported and then like use my phone and also it was no i used my phone to have my laptop connect to it to probably be able to it was crazy but Oh, yeah, yeah, everything's going great over here. Actually, about to get off because it is midnight. It is now the 24th here, or the 25th, excuse me. It's now the 25th here, so I do have to go to sleep soon. But, um, so a few of them work. But, yeah, these invoke ones like right here, backup, DNS, and server operator, those are if they have, if they fall in those group or have those privileges. Why well, you should switch to something like job food. Oh, screw that. No, I'll just keep, I'll just keep punishing myself, that's all. 
Hey, thanks a lot for the file C two M D six N. I'm gonna call you C two. Thanks a lot for file C two. <laughs> you can also with Cherry Tree. You can just export it as PDF. But the problem was to get to the internet, I had to be on the ship network. I can't just plug in my computer into the ship network, and then from there, um, you're not supposed to plug in hard drives into the ship network. So now I have to figure out, okay, how the heck am I going to get a network first off, you know? So it's a whole bunch of different stuff. Like there's a lot of different rules, things like that. Like I can't just plug my computer in the ship network. You know, it's not how Marine Corps works. <laughs> it's not a bring your own device kind of a, kind of a, you know, organization. <laughs> I wish it was, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep, but that should, yeah, the cybersecurity guys wouldn't be very happy. Although the cybersecurity guys really weren't doing shit over there. Here, I'll stop the video like real quick.